is already doing in two all of our lives. Individually, by family, even as a church. Uh, tomorrow, personally for me, going to be my sophomore year level in the College of Law. I'm quite excited. And also tomorrow, uh, anyways, we are a family. I'm free to share and uh, relate this to you. My daughter, our daughter, will gonna fly already, thank God, uh, from Manila. And on Wednesday, A, I will leave. Uh, already for Saudi, and we're gonna be served. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna cherish uh, the good old days uh, since she was small until she finished high school and college. We're gonna do it only for two years, and uh, I know many of you will as well miss my daughter, my daughter. Thank God, new things, new things. I believe. A lot of you as well can relate, relate and plenty of things what those two things the Lord are starting to, to do into your lives. Amen. God is good. And everyone says uh, all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to us a word and message from the Lord which I'm going to entitle this morning. God never fails and God never changed. You say amen for this? Amen. Amen. I'd like us to all stand in honor for the word. I'd like us to give a reverence to the word of God and we please are going to open our Bibles, read from the book of Isaiah 49. We're going to read verses 15 through 16. Many of you love this. and a wonderful Bible. Let's share our Bibles together. What do you mind on that? Hard copy? Is it uh, electronic? Whatever. Let's read the Word of God. Let's share them together. Here we go. Can a woman forget her nursing child that she should have no compassion on the son of her wound. Even this may forget. Yet I will never forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. You all are continually before me. God bless the reading of this word. Very beautiful, very nice. I'd like us to commit ourselves to God. Let's just invite His presence right now. And never, and never to fail you. Because He, as well, never changed. Isn't it? Amen? Let's give the Lord a clap of praise for that. If I have to describe each one of you today, you are a survivor. You are. If I am as well uh, to describe you in detail what you have all over as scars. I mean invisible scars. Because, because all of those trials and all of those uh, testings and storms we needed to wade all through before you're able to reach where you are today. Thank God for his success. Thank God for his prosperity. Thank God for His greatness. By the way, they are your destiny. It's your destination. God destined you to only receive what good that comes from Him. Good, everything goodness proceeds from God. Isn't it? Amen? We give the Lord a clap of praise. But I'm talking, I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen now, about the price that we needed to pay. Huh? We, we may go through a lot, listen, but there's always this one single truth. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like us to be always reminded, Earth or the planet may change or may turn upside down. 
or the way of the sun be changed instead uh, from the east to the west, west to east, or the moon, uh, you know, the pass of the moon or the pass of the sun uh, will exchange whatever. Everything, everything may alter, but there's, there's this one single truth that will stand and will stand forever. And that is, God shall never fail you. That's a 100% promise He said in His Word. God shall never, shall never fail you. Why? Because He never changed. What He was before, He still is today. And He remains to be as forever. In fact, this is quite amazing and kind of crazy. Because even, even, even if we fail God, even if we're not able to perform exactly to what He wanted, even some, sometimes we stray to different directions, God still is faithful. We fail, but He does not. Not a time, not a single day. And He never changes. Sometimes you're good, sometimes we're not. But He remains to be good to us. He really never changes. Even in our giving, and this is not to discourage us to pay faithfully our tithes, but listen to me, sometimes we give our tithes, and most of the times we do not. But God never fails to provide our needs every day. He never changed, amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Come on. I just finished uh, the book of Isaiah in my full year Bible reading. I'm starting now Jeremiah. This morning, uh, fifth chapter. I'm intending to finish today until Jeremiah 10 or maybe Jeremiah 15. Very nice, you know, to associate yourself to read your to read the, the Word of God yourself and receive uh, the life of God, the breath of God, you know, from the Word. Very nice. Now, I got it across this again. And you know what? When I read this, this passage, it, it feels inside of me. This is how the Lord says. Because uh, the, the, prior, the prior verse in verse 14, Israel coming to God, because of what she experienced through, the odds she went, she went through. She came into the Lord and said, God, you already have forgotten us. You already have turned your backs away from us. Never will we have a chance. Never will we have a possibility to anywhere go to the other side. The song a while ago we sung very nicely anointed. It touched me so much. Uh, the song said, uh, friends, uh, praise a while ago, it said, uh, he, I, he never thought, uh, the writer said, he never thought he could go on the other side. I preached one Sunday that it is God's desire, is the plan of God to bring us to the other side. Amen? Amen. The other side, which is the side of blessings. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap of praise. He complained to the Lord, Israel. And this is how the Lord replied. Uh, to the nation of Israel. Maybe sometimes we really do not verbally or openly do the same to God and say, Lord, why you turn you back from me? Why you forgotten me? Maybe I, I won't have chance anymore. Maybe I won't have possibilities anymore. If we have such, God may reply us the same. This is how He did to Israel. God replied, Can a woman forget her nursing child? That she should have no compassion on the son of her womb. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, God always have a sense of compassion to you and to me. Amen? Amen. Every, every time. When He sees you, He is moved. Our God. And He continued. Even this, they may forget. Yet, I will never forget you. Amen? Amen. I would like you to pat somebody's shoulder and point your finger to him and to her and tell him or tell her, God never forgets you. Right. You may have a very low name. By the way, how many names you have as your parents named you? Huh? 
area had a classmate that did have four names. And uh, when they were grade one, kinder or grade one, the classmate would have to write just one of the four names because they're really very too long. Imagine four names. Names of the parents and names of the grandparents combined all together and has even as well a long family name. But despite, you may have the longest name. Of all the names in the world, God still cannot forget you. Amen? Amen. He knows even not just your birthdays, not just your likes, not just your tastes. Jesus said He knows even exactly the number of your hairs, the volume of your hairs. What does that mean? The Lord exactly knows what are those depths you have inside your heart. The Lord knows you from inside out and outside in. The Lord says, I never will forget you. And the next is a bombshell. He said, Behold, I have engraved you in the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Now, literally for Israel, this is this these are the walls, the remaining uh, piece of property uh, of, uh, of the Temple of Solomon. If you, if you know historically, the Temple of Solomon was was burned. Down to the ground, raised to the ground by Nebuchadnezzar. And this is the same place where the Lord made a covenant, a promise and a vow to Israel that in this place, anytime when you are in need, when you pray, I'm gonna I'm gonna hear you. This is the place where he said in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that if you will turn you, if you will turn from your wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive your sins, and heal heal all of your land. He said, in this place. That wall, you know, you see on TV, these Jews would be pounding their forehead and touching this wall and would play some, you know, prayer requests and rule them. And on the cracks of this wall, they would place those, you know, uh, the prayer requests and, you know, they would recite their Hebrew prayers. It's the same wall. The Lord said, because of these walls, I never can forget you. Now, we're not Jewish, we're not Israelites. What are our walls of prayers? Every time our prayers are lifted or ascended into the presence of God, God can never and He never can deny those. Amen? Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. You know what's the literal meaning of God engraving your names on the palm of His hands? Literally, it is meaning God Almighty actually tattooed your name on the palm of his hands. I'm just thinking on the back of my head, God must have a bigger palms than yours. There are how many people in the whole wide universe living today? There are about more or less six billion people all over. All of them, all of us, especially you and me who have Christ in our hearts, our names are tattooed in the palm of His hands. God doesn't sleep and God doesn't wake up. But in my finite mind, in finite understanding, your finite and my finite mind and understanding, there's something can we fail to understand. Maybe early morning or late at night, God would check His palms and He could see your name. He could see our names and starts to remember us. Starts to think about your needs. Start to think about your struggles. Starts to think about what are those battles that you are facing today and God cannot turn His back away from you. Amen? Amen. Can we give the Lord a couple of praise? <laughs> Sister Dalia and I agreed to lady not to cry. I texted Brother James. He replied to me and reminded me to never. I can promise. I can promise. Today we would like to commend all of the fathers around. We miss some that are not because of their jobs or like Brother Nono, he's still in the hospital. Thank God, by the way, 
Brother Nonan is recovering and hopefully by tomorrow or Tuesday he already can be discharged from the ICU and uh, indeed from the hospital. God hears our prayers, amen? amen? But I'm just thinking, being as well a father, to now, God must be very faithful to all of us, to my family. Uh, I still can vividly remember uh, because, you know, things seem, seem to be like to the extent the norm, I mean, to those that, to those that uh, we do not expect and we hate to see, but they keep to be coming and all the while we simply, you know, uh, beyond our abilities, beyond, beyond our human, uh, human strength, we can strap already our shoulders and say, hey, you really are like the norms. But by the way, they are not the norms. They only are our teachers God uses to learn us a lesson. Because after we can break through them and overcome them and get to the other side, we can shake our head and say, God must be good. Or we can say, God must be good. Are you still there? Yeah. I can vividly recall Aya was five years old. Gamaliel was uh, two at the time. It was 1987. Sister Delia approached me and told me, uh, Aya will have to go and enroll to preschool now. And I realized that, uh, you know, our eldest will have to go to school. And uh, she insisted, let's send our children to a Christian school because we are we are servants of God and we are busy, you know, uh, the ministry we cannot have a uh, you know a one hundred percent all the time monitor or uh, a time a time to them and uh, you know how the enemies work and I agree and I by the grace of God I also did want to give uh, you know the best education for my children and I agree excitedly. And we enrolled. Uh, we had we had a little at the time, and uh, went to the school. It was a Christian. It was a Christian school. But after enrolling, I went home and I started to ponder. It was the first mountain. It was the first mountain in the history of my children's education that I. It was the first mountain that I had to face. I had to stand squarely as the challenge, the first challenge. When I went home. When all of the dust settled, it dawned on me. How perhaps will and can, can I make it? Because the ministry was yet early, and we were earning yet really very, very less at that time. We still are earning less today. But you know what? God is always greater than our needs, amen? Yes. But because of them, that time, to the capacity, the little capacity uh, that we had, what I thought, what I worried, how can I perhaps bring my daughter through? I was thinking yet of the press school. Now this was something like 15 years ago, where God proved to be faithful. I mentioned about redundance. I mentioned about Seem, seems to be like it's not the normal, but because it is the usual thing. I mean, the, the routine, the cycle, that even against you will or you didn't like it, you somehow eventually accepted as that to be the normal, but it's not the normal. Not talk to someone else it's, and do it like this and say, it's not, that's not the normal. Come on. The trials, the, the, the trials are not the normal. They are your teachers, amen? The hardships, the difficulties, life's hardships and life's difficulties are not the norms. They are only teachers teaching you, the Lord uses it, you know, to inculcate heavenly things. Not the permanent things, but the, but the eternal things that we can learn. Isn't it, amen? amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. That was 15 years ago. Aya, to God be the glory, not just us, but even her little brother, I'm talking about Burley Gamaliel, 
They made it not just on the preschool, but elementary to the high school. Now each time I would have those worries in the past. When they went uh, from elementary to the high school and much again when Aya was to go at uh, the college, Sister Delia talked to me, your daughter wants to be nursing. I went to the Winslow and started to talk to friends. And uh, you know, I, I really love Ao Cheng and Cheng. It's really your ministry. You know, you helping kids in the church, even to now. There how many years already, ma'am? And uh, you know, uh, I was I was given, you know, I an estimate to how much and what what goes we are we were to pay. I started to get too early. But you know, say say with me, the walls. The walls. I didn't hear you louder. Everyone says the walls. The walls, the walls are our prayers. Now li listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. When we go through a lot, our ace, the card of ace you always have is prayer. Amen. 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 I like you to just hit with me. Say my ace, my ace card. Come on, this prayer. If you pray. You have your miracles. You don't pray, you don't have miracles. We just pray. I still can remember that. Perfectly, some six years or seven years ago, we were in our worship. Annie's here. It was her daughter. We worshiping the Lord. As we were starting, it was a Sunday, and I was to enroll. No, I was to pay already. AS uh, enrollment. We had we had the earlier process the process of enrollment. Following week because I told her on Monday we we're gonna pray and we're gonna pay we're gonna pray uh, we're gonna pay enough. And uh, it it was a statement of faith because I still didn't have much. Actually I did not didn't have much. I didn't have any <laughs> while we were singing our songs. Somebody touched my back. It was the daughter of Anne. And the daughter is now like 9 or 11 years old. Smiling on me and handing me an envelope. Who cares this? It was, it was from a sister, a friend who's, who's not around anymore in Zamboanga. We not met for some times. You say like 7 or 8 years old. So, thought to me. I was thinking maybe out in the night the Lord reminded her about me. Handed me 5,000 pesos. Now he was A.S. enrollment for her first year. I can relate to you stories after stories after stories that God never fails. And God never changed. I'm talking about our Father. Let's give the Lord a praise. Starting to be emotional because hey, I will leave already tomorrow. And uh, on Wednesday, fly to Saudi, and we cannot see her. We're gonna miss her for two years. We gotta let her go because she's now a grown up. We gotta let her go because uh, she needs to be independent. But I cannot fail, ladies and gentlemen, to remember the goodness of God. That's why I would like to encourage to all of the fathers around and to all of the parents when the tough or when the going gets to be tougher, always remember the goodness of God. Remind yourselves of the faithfulness of the Lord. Now the last was, uh, we were in the house Friday. I was alone in our clothes. She came, she came to the room and excitedly telling me, Papa, I now have a flight schedule, June 18. And we were excited. She, she told that to her mother. And uh, Sister Delia would have to approach me and talk to me, Hey, we're going to prepare, we're going to prepare this muscle. So, 
for, for her leaving. It's a real, very long story, but I tell you, to God be the glory from the tickets to all the rest, uh, you know, to the pocket money, uh, 200 uh, reals, reals, that she will have to show uh, on, on the climb down from uh, the airplane on their touch to Saudi Arabia, all uh, provided by God. All is now set. Tomorrow at 9 o'clock, 9.20, I will, I will have to drive her to the airport. Kind of a mixed emotion, but ladies and gentlemen, what I'm saying, hear me, read my lips, ladies and gentlemen, God is faithful. Amen? If He is, if he is to one, He is to all. God never fails, ladies and gentlemen, and He never changes. Amen? Amen? Let's give God a club of praise. Did a person whom you trusted so much fail you? God never will. Sometimes there are those people, we really, we really are trusting so much, so we pile ourselves on, onto them. It's not wrong. It's not wrong to have friends. But people are limited. People can fail you. But you know what? God never, God can never, amen. amen. That's why it's worth it to place our trust and our hope unto the Lord. It's worth it to put our trust and our hope to our Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like us to raise our heads for a while and close your eyes and say, I'm placing my trust and my hope in your mighty God. Amen. Amen. Praise be to the living God. Let's give Jesus a love of praise. That's why children listen to me. You don't know how your parents or your fathers paid the price to bring you to where you are now. That's why in the Bible, when we stand against our parents, it's a sin. The Bible calls it a blasphemy every time we speak back, talk back against our parents. And God rather rewards if we obey them, if we leave them. The Apostle Paul said it this way in Ephesians chapter 6. For it is the first commandment that has a promise. What is that? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for it is right. It is the first commandment that has a promise that we will live long on earth if we will. If we will reverence, if we will honor our parents. Amen. Praise be to the living God. Are you still there? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now here we go. God places dreams and desires in our hearts. Trust and believe Him to see you through. You know, one of the best times and the best places to be in our lives is when we are in our bed. When the lights are closed. When everyone is asleep. Through. Uh, there is this story I would like to show you. Are you still there, amen? Let us go, brothers and sisters, to 2 Kings 6, 1 and 7. Second Kings Second Kings chapter six, beginning verse one through seven. Now the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See the place where we dwell under your charge is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan, and each of us get there a log. Let us make a place for us to dwell there. And he answered, Go. Then one of them said, Be pleased to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, Alas, my master, it was barren. Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? When he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron made the iron flow. And he said, Take it up. So he reached it 
He reached out his hand and took it. <laughs> Amazing story. A group of prophets started to dream and started to desire. Because to the place where they were living, they were now uh, they were now starting to be starting to be tired. They said, let us have a bigger house. How many of us here dream, dream to have a beautiful house? <laughs> Amen. How many of us dream to have this and those? And then happened to the prophets. These were holy men. Nothing wrong. It's, it's not wrong to dream better things. It's not wrong to desire uh, bigger things. Because after all, our God is a big God. Amen. Amen. And they went to Elisha. I am spoke about this man last Sunday. They went to Elijah as the leader. They asked, can we go to the Jordan and fall some logs? Because they wanted to build a bigger house. And Elijah agreed with them. And he was invited. And everyone was now excited to fall, you know, trees and uh, to carry the timber. And that will, those will be, you know, the materials for the house, bigger house they were to build. But you know what? Something circumstantial happened, took place while they were falling the trees. Because as one of the prophets falling this, falling this tree, suddenly the head of the axe, the axe head, flew to the air and jumped to the waters, to the water deep, to the river deep. And the man was now despondent. He was now starting to be afraid. He went and cried to the prophet, Alas, my master, very unfortunate. Poor is me, and he was talking to the prophet because that axe that I was falling to this tree, the axe head jumped to the waters, was a barrel axe. Can you imagine how, how was the fright of the, the pro prophet, he just borrowed the axe by all, by all faith, in good faith. He was following this tree, not to build his own house, but to build the house of the prophets. But in any time to all of the times, and it could happen not just any time, but to any man, but it happened to him. But the man, the prophet instead, to also go and panic. By the way, when you are on wrong situations, now... I learned this by experience, by God's grace. Ne never go on panic. Hello, amen? amen? Now look to someone else and say, never go, never go on panic. Stay relaxed. Stay focused. Huh? Then if, G if, if you would receive the word of Jesus, he would always say, peace be still. You know the raging waters? They were in the boat. Water starting to get it into the boat and uh, then the twelve were now afraid, and uh, especially Peter. Jesus was only asleep, and he stood up, pointed his fingers to the ocean and to the elements, and he said, Peace be still! And all at once, split of seconds, turbulence came into peace, and still happened. Amen. And, and uh, the prophet Eli Elisha went to the man, and he said, Just all night. Have the peace of God, and and uh, the prophet, you know, took a branch from a tree, and he threw that branch exactly to the wall or to where the head of the axe fell. And you know what? The branch of the tree served as like a magnet, a heavy magnet that pulled, you know, the fallen, the fallen axe head from the deep bottom. Can you imagine that axe head flowed to the water and the man was very excited. Maybe he went and plunged to the water and swam and took the axe head and the axe head was restored, you know, to the axe. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, the same God who uploaded an axe, the axe head is still the same God that you and I are serving. Amen. Amen. God never fails. God never changes. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this is the last, brothers and sisters.
God allows hardships in our paths for the purpose that we will not forget Him. Amen. In Deuteronomy, please we go. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Starting verses 2 to 5. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness that He might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep His commandment or not. And He humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know nor did your fathers know, that He might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man. But man lives by every word that comes out from the mouth of, of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your food did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. Wow. Few lines are quite familiar because Jesus himself uh, quoted this in the New, in the New Testament. Particularly when he said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Two things we can learn here. You know, there are sometimes not just a day or two days, the people here for 38 days, of 38 years. The Lord, you know, the kind of provision that they ate for 38 years was manna. Say the word manna. manna. You know, even if the kind of food you're eating are the kind of food you are eating are uh, are delicious but but if they are repeated repeated foods you know you would start to dislike them you know the this but house uh, in uh, Boulevard they were given Jollibee the first time and the first day and maybe the first week they really rejoiced. Jollibee. But you know what? When he went to be one month, drug to be two months, drug to be up to now, every day, breakfast, lunch and dinner, uh, you know, the chicken joy, they started to complain. They wanted to eat back the panji <laughs> and the agalagal and those stuffs. Hello, are you with me? Amen? Now, the same people started to do the same in the past. You know, manner. I mean, Lord, why this? And the Lord came back to them and taught them. He allowed you to be fed with manna instead. That you may know, the second thing, that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word proceeds from the mouth of God. Meaning to say, our survival are not just only of the making or the artifices that we do. Our own hard works. Our own, our own labors. But by claiming the word of God that he spoke or was said in his word. Hello, are you with me? Amen? Amen. That every day we can know or in our circumstances we can know to claim what is His promise. Amen? Uh, Brother Nolan, maybe I will close it here. One evening I went to uh, the hospital uh, because Sister Gina asked me with all she, they were, they were in, uh, in their high emotions, they were sobbing, telling me, asking me, Pastor, can you talk? Uh, to the doctor of Brother Nono and ask the real score what what really we are to do. Uh, OG was asking me for Papa. I talked to the doctor and you know what the doctor plainly told me going to be only a miracle for your for your patient. It will only to be miracle for your patient to survive the ICU. Explain to me what, what Brother Nolan has. It, it was, it was uh, a, lit, a literal statement from the doctor 
himself that Brother Nolan is only awaiting for like how many days or how many minutes God knows. But he said such will he only be a miracle for the brother to make it. Now we prayed, we trusted the Lord, we believed for his miracles. You know, we insisted, Sister Gina is very strong. You know, God believes and honors our faith. Amen. When when you have you have your house burned. And you insisted, Lord, you were able to give me one newer house, one better house. God will honor your faith. Amen. If you insisted because your, your parents, your grandparents, your parents and you, you did not finish. Finish your studies. Now your children, you're working hard and you insisted, no, Lord, my kids can finish their studies. My kids will going to make it. They're going to have better lives than we do. Or your family, or you're coming for yourself and your family. As to what faith you have, the depths of your uh, of your trust and your belief unto the Lord, that's how God will honor you. Amen. So Gina in his tears and shaking and telling people, no, I, I want to let go, Brother Nono. She told me about how how it is to be, to be alone, life to be alone. And you know what? To God be the glory. We, we still are winning the battle, we still are contending before the presence of God now brother not brother not will will make it you know what by by Monday or by Tuesday he's going to be discharged and uh, he will continue his recovery home yes he will have his medicines he will have his uh, he will have his oxygen but he is winning the battle are you with me ladies and gentlemen amen what are those you're going through this moment, this time? Stand on to the promises of God. Because God never fails. Never changed. You receive it this morning? Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Let's all stand.